Greetings, everybody. This is Debbie Dashinger from Dare to Dream, and it is a pleasure to be with you today. Thanks if you're joining us live on one of the many platforms where we are right now. And if you're watching the replay, thank you as well, because time is infinite and an illusion, so we're all together in this moment. Anyway, I'm going to be this weekend out at the UFO Contact in the Desert. I'm actually leaving tonight, so I'll be in Indian Wells. Any of you out there, are you attending? And if you're going to be there and you know this face because you watch the show rather than listen to the show, please come up and say Hello, and let me know you listen to Dare to Dream. Connect with me. It'll be a pleasure to see you out there. I'm excited because believe it or not, it is my first time going. I know, crazy, right? Have been invited, but this is the first time they have actually asked me as press media. So I'm excited to, yeah, I'm really excited to see all of who is out there and the conversations and everything that this weekend is about. And I'm actually ready to see something while we're out in the desert. So let's make that happen too. Uh, a little bit later on the show today, Corinne Grillo is here. She's been on the show before. She's the founder of the Angel Alchemy Academy. And she's here to talk about her new book, which is Angel Wealth Magic. And in this conversation today, you're going to hear creative solutions to grow your bank account, a business, an entrepreneurial dream, or the home and life that you want. This is definitely the conversation for you. Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. We are currently listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's a high-ranking self-improvement podcast on Apple Podcasts and has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. I thank our sponsors, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out in the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or if you'd just like to take the course anywhere in the world, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or Access consciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I help spiritual messengers like yourself get your message out through media. I'm a book writing coach, and you can join our Zoom. We meet twice a month, and I coach people how to write an exquisite book. I also have a company that takes an author's book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And finally, I teach spiritual messengers how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. If you would like to join, I've got a free webinar coming up to teach you how to be interviewed and all the ins and outs from beginning, what to put together and what to do while you're on air and even what to do after and how to repurpose. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift and sign up there and I will alert you as the webinar is rolling out, it's going to be fresh and real and raw. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest today, Corinne Grillo, is the author of Angel Wealth Magic and The Angel Experiment. She's also a Chicana and Puerto Rican mother a licensed psychotherapist, visionary leader, inspirational speaker, and proprietor of the Casa Condor Retreat Center in Mount Shasta, California. Corinne offers online training in authentic spiritual leadership, nature immersions, intuitive healing arts, and in-person trainings. She's dedicated her life to sharing the life-changing gifts she received while learning to work with the angels. You can learn more about her at corinnegrillo.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Corinne to Dare to Dream. It's so good to have you back here. Oh, thank you, Debbie. It's so awesome to be here. Thanks for having me on. I got to say, I'm really proud of you because this has been a few years in the making, right? And yeah. I remember when New World Library first approached you about writing a second book and you were having a la, 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 kind of experience like, this is awesome. This is a beautiful opportunity. I'm a heck yes. And there was like, where's the juice? So you did it. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did you find the juice to do this? Well, I waited for the inspiration, essentially, I, you know, rather than forcing something, I had to wait for the inspiration to come. And I, I had a wonderful, you know, I, I, I 
call it a financial miracle happen. And, and spirit sat me down and said, yeah, we brought this on and it's not just for you. We brought it on like this so that you can share, share the steps and share a different way that we can help folks. And I think it was within the context of, uh, you know, during lockdown and, and things, things like that, people were struggling, people losing their businesses. And so at the time, yeah, it was very inspiring. And so I had to wait for it, Debbie. <laughs> You had to wait for it, but you know what? It happened. And I love that because when you change that perspective, it's so true what you said. Mm -hmm. When you change the perspective from the me to the look who I'm serving, it's very different because you have a piece of the puzzle, which regards angels that other people don't. And you're going to present it in a way that nobody else will. So thank you for creating your dream and helping us at the same time. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Yeah, I dared. I dared to do it. Yes. <laughs> awesome. I know when you created your dream. So yeah. in this new book, loved it, by the way, love all the exercises. Thank you for that. It wasn't just talking, but you give so much practical. And you said in the new book, quote, all we need to do is call upon divine intervention that is ready and able to help us fulfill our financial and best life dreams. So is that something you use in your life? How do you work with that? Yes. I, I talk to angels a lot. I mean, even when I'm not asking for something, it's just to me at this stage, it's about just realizing that we have friends that are there companions sometimes when we need to process something talk to some someone but yes i i ask for all the things um and i also give a lot of love too you know a lot of gratitude it's kind of like a two way street um but but yeah it took me took me a while to realize how real angels were and how they they literally are just right here for all of us and they are not from a specific religion they are beyond religion and they are here for all of us from all walks of life from all over the world and there's a lot of different ways to slice that pickle you know as far as there's a lot of different things you can call it or call them um but uh but they're there they're there and do you see them or do you feel them it's a little of both. It's a little of both. It depends on the context. Um, in the beginning, I could I could sense them, and uh, they would, you know, um, you know. In the beginning, I you know, when I first realized they were real, it was it's because I witnessed a miracle, and I I I realized, oh gosh, okay, um, angels are real. And uh, again, depending on the situation. Uh, my, I think my first primary way of experiencing them was through clairsentience, meaning I could feel the presence come into the room, or I'm trying to do just regular old psychothera psychotherapy, and I feel the angels walk in, and I'm, you know, just going, oh gosh, am I, what am I supposed to do? Should I say this out loud? Because um, back in the beginning, when I started working with angels, it happened spontaneously, and it took me a while to kind of adapt to the new reality that I, I'm feeling, seeing, experiencing angels and what the heck am I supposed to do about it? Amazing. Amazing. When you do see them, what do you see exactly? Uh, well, it depends on if I have my eyes open or eyes closed. Um, sometimes it's just lights or little twinkles. A, a lot of us have these experiences. It's just, we don't um, connect it, connect the dots. So sometimes, sometimes it's a flash of light. Sometimes it's, it's a, um, it's kind of like a, an etheric or kind of like a radiance that's stronger on one side of someone or the other or above them. Uh, sometimes I just, again, like I can feel if they're touching someone's hand and then I'll say, Hey, do you have any pressure on your left hand? And so again, there's a lot of different ways, but people experience angels in a lot of different ways. Um, but yeah, I usually just see, see lights. I don't see like the full wings with the sword or, you know, anything like that. Blue um, flames, all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I know it's angels versus like an ancestor because of the, how it, how it feels. It's to me, it feels a little more effervescent, a little brighter, whereas ancestors feel more like people walking in the room. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting yeah. that you can perceive that as well. Okay. So we mentioned at the beginning, and I like to deliver about creative solutions and you have 
experience them. I know you work with people both privately and in groups. So what do you teach? Teach us right now. What are some creative solutions? And this is a very spiritual crowd. So you want to maybe, you know, give us some stuff we haven't heard before for those who are out there like, yeah, I, in fact, I just want a little tangent here, but there's a beautiful exercise right at the beginning about, you know, what do you need cash for right now? And you you make a list and there's some things to do. But mm-hmm. folks who want to grow a bank account, maybe they say, I really want to do this X business, or I'm an entrepreneur and I have a dream of, I'll even throw in uh, somebody who, let's see, let's go across the board, somebody who has debt and God, their dream is to travel the world. Ta-da. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. would you recommend? Uh, there's a lot of different things that they could do. So let me just feel into like, what would be a good first step for someone like this? Um, first I would say, call in your angels. Even if you don't know which angel yet, you call in your angel and you ask, ask them to de-shame your game. Meaning sometimes if we're really in debt, we somehow feel like failures, we feel burdened. And sometimes shame itself blocks us from miracles, blocks us from uh, that connection because maybe we feel unworthy. And I talk a li- I talk about that in, in the book, talk about shame. So you can call the angels in and first just identify what the heavy feeling about this is. So maybe it's shame. Um, maybe it's just a uh, depression or anxiety. So Uh, identify that first feeling about it. Think of the situation. How do you really feel? And then you can call in your angels, do some deep breathing and ask them to lift some of that off of you and can reconnect you with your heart. So I always work with angels as an act of love. So when you think about uh, why we want more cash, we want to pay off our debt so that we can do this and this and this. But when we really sum it up, we want to experience more love in our lives. And sometimes the uh, depletion, uh, the anxiety stops us, stops us from that. So I like to just get clear on, Hmm, what's my overarching feeling about this angels help me remove some of this stuff. And then what kind of love am I trying to call in? I'm trying to call in feeling safe in my body, safe in my bank account. And I want to have overflowing cash, or I would love to, and a lot of people are, are in this place right now. I would love to quit my job, my J O B and do heart-centered work where I serve from my soul and get paid at the same time. How do I do that? So angels can give us creative solutions, um, but it is a very personal recipe, a very personal process. Even though I line up in the book uh, rituals and different, different steps to really open up the pathway, I always um, invite people to, to go beyond just quick cash and really get into the why. And there are tons of angels that can specifically help with different things. So let's say that you realize, gosh, I have a really stinky attitude about life and stinky attitude about things. And I it's just, cause that's not always incongruent with attracting a bunch of cash. So if that's that, then you can uh, look, look in the book or look at your, whatever your angel resources and go, Hey, Archangel Jophiel helps me beautify my thoughts, beautify my, my mind. And if we are in a dark mental place, I always recommend calling on Archangel, either Michael or Archangel Jophiel. So wealth attraction isn't just a one step thing. We have to look at, um, look at how we're feeling about things. Maybe even what are the beliefs that we grew up that limit us based on our skin color, our gender, um, and what our culture tells us about you know, working hard and and all of those things. So it's, it's a multifaceted thing, which is why I I talk a lot about the different, (laughs) the different branches of wealth making inside the book. Beautiful. Do you have any examples you could give us um, client stories who went from one particular status and were able to completely alter that using your methods or perhaps something personal for you? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I talk about my personal situation in the book, um, but maybe I can talk about a realtor who is really having a hard time moving past. She would only uh, get deals for $999,000. And every time she had a client that was selling a house for 1 million and more, it just didn't work. And she spent years and she was a busy realtor. Okay. She knew that there was something else happening on the inside. So she came in for a session. 
we did some work. Uh, Spirit sh showed me that some of the issues was just ancestral issues, things that she had kind of through epigenetics, some old poverty trauma that made her people believe that rich people were terrible people. And so once we identified that belief, we worked with the angels, we cleared uh, that belief and she literally left that session, went to her next client that day. She came in before this million dollar client. Cause she's like, I'm not going to do this again. I know what's happening. I'm going to go see Corinne. So she did it. And she sold her first, she got her uh -huh. first million dollars. Like uh -huh. I think it was a million five hundred. Wow. And then after that, what was wild is that it's as if a dam broke open. And she said within a week, she had, she were up in the Bay area in California. She had Beverly Hills calling her trying to list houses with her. She doesn't, she didn't even know how this person got her number, but it just cascaded. And then since then she, she's been doing really, really well. Yeah. So again, that's why looking more deeply underneath what might be inhibiting our, our, our power to, to have that, to break our own glass ceilings. Um, first, we have to identify that it is a glass ceiling because a lot of us are just so used to being in a certain place. We just think that's what life is. I know that was true for me. Um, so once you identify it, then you, you get to task. What are the, uh, what are the questions that I can ask myself uh, and, and, you know, do some inner, inner, inner work there. Right. Because it's a repeated experience and it's very easy to think this is just what it's like for me. And yet the moment someone who's in that condition looks outside of them, well, you can see there's people not in that condition. Right. And that is the litmus right there. The, there's nothing different. We're both energy and we're both energy breathing. So something is happening in their lane that is allowing them this overflow and something is clogging up my lane. And I like that you talk about epigenetics could be involved, of course, past lives could be involved. And like you said, the family that you grew up in could make a huge difference that you've seen something also repeatedly or been told something repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to go over what you said for folks so they can remember that, which is first identify, well, you need to know what it is you want to create that's not there right now. Then you want to identify any heavy feelings that are going on. Then you want to call in your angels. Do you need to know your angels' names? Or you can just so say... Angels. Hey, angels. Yeah. You just open in the beginning, in the very beginning, because this is something someone can do today. They don't, you don't have to be an, an expert, an angel expert, because your angels are literally right there right now. So, but they need um, a task, you know, they need something. So if you say, Hey, I'm feeling this pressure. Can you come and help lighten my load? Mm. And you sit there and breathe and you give it a minute or two, mm. nine times out of 10, you will feel a minimum of 20 or 30% reduction of, of that intensity. Um, a lot of times people feel it right away. That's uh, true because they always say, Angel can't just rush in and help. They may see earth, this person I love needs help. You have yeah. to ask. Yes, you have to ask, you have to engage, you have to be in relationship, period. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even religious people don't even know what that means to be in relationship with spirit. And relationship needs watering, right? Mm -hmm. We need communication. Hey, angels, you know, give them some love, ask for stuff, talk to them. And the more, and this is what happened for me, the more that I actually did talk to them is the more that the miracles started happening. So so yeah, they're right there right now. You don't have to be an expert and you don't even have to believe in them because when I started talking to them, I didn't fully believe in them either. Someone just said, Hey, talk to them as if they're real. And I said, okay. And then the things started happening. A cascade effect of, of amazingness started happening. So it's true for, for all of us. And something else I'm being compelled to say right now through spirit is that this is working with angels is not um, a woo-woo or airy-fairy practice. This is something that we all have in our DNA. This knowledge, this wisdom is ancient through our ancestors. Our ancestors have always worked with spirit, with benevolent forces to help us thrive. And so uh, the only way for us to really prove that out is to give it a shot, like a scientist. Um, and, and, 
because when people think angels, I, I feel like, you know, automatically people, some people, not your people, but some people out there are, are going to judge us for like, oh, you're so, oh, it's so new agey. It's not. And none of the work that we're doing is new agey. Channeling is not new agey. It's an ancient art form. Mediumship, not new either. Ancient art form. And so, um, so the angels too, they're just right here right now. And we have to learn, I feel the old ways in order to learn how to thrive again. And the more that we embrace these things, not as a separate secret thing that we're doing, but included in all of our lives, the more that we receive the, the benefits and the bounty of that. Oh, Ben, I love that benefits and bounty. Okay. So first we identify what we want to create. Then we identify if there are any heavy feelings, what those are. Then we call in the angels and then we ask the angels. And I, this was incredible. De shame my game. So we ask the angels instead to allow us to create what it is we desire as an act of love, to experience more love or and or safety and or overflowing, et cetera, whatever the truth is for you. And then, gosh, I'm trying to see what I wrote. Sent work, heart, oh, heart-centered work. Yeah, heart-centered work as well. And then I guess you get out of the way right? You allow the angels to do their magic because otherwise you're blocking all the good. Exactly. You get out of the way you receive. And sometimes you receive in the form of inspiration. Uh, the steps that I have in the book are designed to actually bring on like a random quick cash too, mm -hmm. but I'm a little, you know, I really want people to go also deeper with that. And so if it's not just $20,000 that you want, but long-term, you know, like, what do you want? What do you desire long-term? And then we call that in. But one of the things that, uh, that we kind of falter around is that spirit will give us also inspiration and ideas. And, uh, sometimes we want, we just want to be rescued. And sometimes that's not the path. Um, sometimes it's our job to meet spirit where they are to meet in between somewhere. Hmm. So I just want to stress another way that we get in the way of our bounty is by refusing to take action because oh. they feel too scary. Definitely. Or overwhelming. Oh yeah. Overwhelming or impossible, or it's never going to work. Or you think you're shy, but you're not really shy. It's, it's just, you're just afraid. You're just oh. af afraid of putting your neck out there. Hmm. Yeah, those are really good examples. And um, it makes me curious. I I wouldn't know. I never even heard of the angel Jophiel that you brought up. I've never even heard that name before. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that intimate. I know maybe five different names. Woohoo. But the thing that makes me very curious about this, I had, I guess it was last year, I had a galactic reading. So that's an Akashic record reading, but galactic. Mm -hmm. And a, it's a beautiful experience. And uh, the gal, she's very famous and she's pretty amazing. But she told me the inception of my soul was Elohim. Mm -hmm. And it was the second time somebody told me that, that I had a lot of respect for. And the first time I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. <laughs> and uh, just keep walking. that in your back pocket. You know, it's casual. Casual, right. lighthearted conversation, Elohim. That's right. You're co-creator with God. It's <laughs> like, woo. but yeah, I really brushed it off the first time. And then a year later, somebody came back and same. And so I paid attention because both these people are tremendous. And I thought, okay, what would it look like to just look into this? But I have from time to time when I do my work and my morning practice or different things, I just call to them because I feel like, well, in a sense, they're my brothers and sisters. Exactly. Like that's a wild thought. So what if I called them in and I still want to investigate, what does that mean? If I was a co-creator once upon a time or concurrently a, a lifetime, what does that mean for me today? And I find that fascinating that there could be some of those angelic qualities of you want it, you got it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a big path for me right now. And who knows, maybe these processes I've been using of yours could open that conversation for me or that connection for me. Yeah. I mean, that's what angels do. I, it, it's not just, they, they help us get cash. They help us with all the things, but one definition of wealth is the deep internal wellspring of wealth, which is 
our spirit, which is Mm -hmm. that divinity within us and, and really allowing that fire to burn. But angels classically in Western traditional magic, in Kabbalah, it's not just about praying and give me stuff. It's about the highest form of high magic, which is illumination, enlightenment, and they are bridge builders. So they are messengers, but I see them as bridges to our truth, Mm. whatever that truth may be. And what is a banishing ritual? What what is a banishing ritual and why is it important? Yeah, a banishing ritual is something, again, that traditionally folks have used during ceremony. Um, Even shamanic ceremony has a form of banishing, but it is a way to clear your container, clear the space when you're entering into a magical operation, doing a ritual to call whatever it is in. It's a, it's a love spell or, you know, whatever it is you're doing. So a banishing ritual invokes the way that I talk about it in, in this book is invokes um, the powerful quadrants, the four corners. And also the archangels that stand in the four corners to create a circle of protection and uh, above you and beneath you. So that when you walk into your operation, you've cleared all the demons, inner demons (laughs) and outer demons. And you, in a way, it's a way to sterilize your beaker (laughs) for your experiment. Yeah. And what have you banished before that has been really prevalent that has had you know tremendous impact? Well, banishing is it will banish anything that is in your field that's disharmonious. So one way to think of it is if you're experiencing depression or if you're an empath and you're just caked over and you don't you don't know why you're feeling funky. But, you know, more than likely you've soaked up someone else's invisible dog poop that they leave behind and, uh, and you can use the banishing ritual to release you from anxiety, depression, and those kinds of things at the very least. Now, if you are really engaged in the spiritual world and you feel like you're being haunted or, um, there's something demonic or kind of yucky around you, you can use a banishing ritual to do, do the protection. So I have banished all of the above. Wow. Like one session and done. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what it's, that's what it's for. You have to try the banishing ritual to, to understand. But again, it takes, I would say practice and also understanding your own authority. And so what trips us up and what kind of makes us, I would say a little wobbly and afraid of any of that stuff that I just mentioned is when we don't, we're not in our power. We're not in our center and we don't understand our deeper nature and our relationship with spirit. Um, so we still feel kind of like small and under attack. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways that that can manifest. So, um, so yeah, we have the authority to, to banish whatever, but we have to kind of practice that you know, practice and really feel into it and get really skilled at that. Amazing. Yeah, totally. And then so concurrently or contrary, I should say, then how can listeners own their power? So everybody, everybody who's watching this and listening to this, they are light workers. They are the earth angels. How would you recommend here's how to really step it up and like, be all that, be your own boss, be the boss, be the boss. Um, yeah, I, I, there's so many different, that's a great question. So many different ways to answer that. Let me just feel into the best way to answer it for right now. Um, I think the first step is not seeking validation from anybody else, um, to really find validation from the inside first, anytime we're looking for someone to validate us, I believe in angels and, but my, but my, whoever makes fun of me. Okay. If you catch yourself in that game, you've just given all your power away because the bottom line is who cares? You're here for something and your unique, special people cannot find you if you don't own all that you are. So I say, no, don't look for validation outside of yourself, believe and trust whatever your instinct is, wherever you want to move forward. If you got this badass message, say it out loud, say it louder than you ever would. Um, and, and again, trust, don't look for validation outside and take way bigger risks 
than you're than you're remotely comfortable with. Step all the way outside of the box. Put your neck, if you're used to putting it out for like six inches, put it out three feet and and you know go farther because we all have a vision for how we can do that but there ain't no way to claim your power unless you know you're totally supported and we cannot build that kind of trust just being in faith faith is like i'm just going to be in my bubble and i believe in god i believe in good things will happen to me trust is when you step out of the box you start making power moves you're not looking for validation outside yourself you're just doing your work and then you really see if the universe is going to support you. Yeah, I resonate so much with what you're saying. I was just in a ceremony last weekend, a medicine ceremony. And one of the many things that I was shown by the divine is staying in my own lane. And so, you know, and I love them because they're so graceful with me and gentle, but clear. And they made it very clear that as a sensitive and an empath, I'm aware of like everything, you know, energy and rhythms and movements and this person, that, and oh, you know, that person, even in a ceremony, you know, if you're hear somebody well, throwing up and- Especially in a ceremony. Right, and my heart's <laughs> going to them or, oh, I'm not throwing up. I'm not getting rid of anything. I mean, it's a million things you could do with that. Or just, I think some people also get can get very distracted by that. Like, oh, I wish they would be quiet. That's not my thing. But um, they were just really showing me like, it's a gift, like appreciate the gift of being an empath and knowing, and also a clairsentient and stay in your lane, like bring it back here. And it's all about you, Deb. It, in, and I mean that in the way, focus on yourself. What's your process? What are you dealing with right now? Forget about what's going on out there. They're good. Divine's there too. Oh, but yeah. what is it you need and want? What is it, you know, where are we moving you right now? And that is really huge for me, seriously. Um, Cause I think I was really codependent after my childhood. Um, and that's both from being so uber aware and <laughs> also needy, you know, needy of love and approval and whatever else. And so coming out of all that and like, I, I can sense there's a big piece of me stepping into another level of potency that I haven't before. And that was just like one piece. So I, I really, I'm really vibing with what you're talking about right now and the importance of that, your own path, your own journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see, you know, what you're, what you're saying. And, and it is a practice, isn't it? To focus on ourselves, especially when we're empaths and feeling, <laughs> feeling everything. And, you, uh, and especially, I think a lot of women have a hard time really feeling like they're valuable enough to just focus on themselves and not the whole world needs you right now. You need you. And I think right now on the planet, um, a lot of us are being called deeper inside of ourselves, deeper inside of our hearts, because we're getting new pulses uh, to, to shift and change in different ways, like guidance from deeper into the cosmic heart. And for those of us who are here to do trippy, trippy work, we need to focus on ourselves and stay in our own lane, right, Deb? Yes, totally. And and I love what you were saying because it's really now more than ever true. The answer to every opportunity is yes. That's there is no wobble there. It's okay, by the way, because I feel all that stuff too. Like, like why me? You know, I've, I've been asked to speak on a massive stage in Mexico City in December, and I went okay. That's beautiful. Thank you for finding me and asking me. Um, I was asked in ceremony to sing at the end of Saturday night. You know, there's a part of me like, oh my God, I'm on medicine and I feel this. It's like, whatever. The answer is yes. And I got up and sang and I'm so glad I did because it was beautiful. It was beautiful for me. It was beautiful for me to express. It was beautiful for me to contribute. Beautiful for people to receive and move them. And right, that moment, that was a moment I wouldn't have gotten back. All of these are moments. So I agree. We came here to be big and live big. So that the answer to every opportunity is hallelujah and yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, especially if I don't feel capable. <laughs> especially if I don't, because I get to prove myself wrong. Exactly. How else are we going to tap into those deeper tools and resources? And that's what I mean by putting your neck all the way out there a little bit, a little bit wider, a little bit wider. Cause you do, you tap into some really amazing, um, frontiers on the inside. 
Well, my dear, you are an amazing example of this, period. So let's talk about that a little bit. Great segue because you identify as a Chicana and Puerto Rican. You outline very clearly in your book the setting that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. And coming from where you came from, the odds for you to become who you have visibly out in the world as an author, uh, financially, happiness-wise, everything that you've created, um, owning a retreat center, all of this amazing stuff, the odds were not in your favor. So first, let's talk about what is amazing for you about your lineage and about growing up in that amazing culture. Mm, yeah, well, you know, the the package of my lineage is really even just recently coming even more clear, you know, as I anchor and deepen into my own ancestors and and integrate more with their wisdom and allow myself to get rerooted here um, in my body, but also with my DNA and my my genetics. Um, the gift of of just having, you know, as much as I love angels, I'm also deeply into earth medicine and it and plant medicine, ancestral medicine. But the work that I started unpacking over in Shasta has been so extraordinarily mind blowing in that it has put me into contact with just a deeper magic, deeper medicine, and it's ancestral. And, uh, and, and I just want to say to all of us here, these gifts that we all have, you know, a lot of your, your people are deep feelers, empaths, visionaries, seekers. A lot of us feel like we came from nowhere but it is coming from our ancestors. There are highly gifted humans standing behind us, humans. A lot of us want to say, oh, it's just coming from the stars or the galactic, whatever. Your ancestors, super badass too. So it's vertical and horizontal. Um, and so I just, I come from a lineage of healers and oracles and I can own this now. Um, oh, wait. Uh, so say more about that. What do you mean? Yeah. So the Oracle side were, was the Puerto Rican side. And uh, because of colonization, you know, all of us have been uprooted from our lands. A lot of us have been uprooted, no matter where you are, you could be from Europe, but if you're over in the United States, you have been uprooted from your land also. So we lost this connection. But uh, anyways, yeah, my ancestors started piling in, giving me instruction, teaching me. And uh, yeah, the Oracles, yeah, actually my grandfather was, was a trans channel which I didn't know because my dad is like, shush, shush, you know, hush, hush about it. And, uh, and so he was indigenous uh, in Puerto Rico and was a trans channel. So when I was reading about his, his, uh, his upbringing and the, his, their religion with Espiritismo, I look at the altars of Espiritismo. And then I look at my altar and I go, oh my gosh, it's almost the same. So I thought I was doing something new, talking to angels and talking, but it's in the lineage is what I'm saying. And then on the left, on the other side, and I'm saying for all of us, it's in our lineage. The more that we make contact with the ones that stand behind us that are in resonance with our deeper work or deeper medicine, the more powerful we become, the more visionary we become. And so on the, on my Mexican side, bunch of healers, big heart centered lovers, people who, ch who channel uh, Guadalupe and the, the compassion goddesses and the warm mother. So that for me is the, the sum of the work that I do. It's so hard. And it's so, you know, it's a little like really magical trippy too. It's a combination. Um, so that is like my lineage. Now, as far as my upbringing, I got a lot of flavor and, and spice from that, um, of course. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of trauma, a lot of hard hardship, you know, going on. My dad was, uh, was a Vietnam veteran. We did a couple tours and uh, back then they didn't have a lot of support or help for our soldiers. So when he came back, he, you know, he wasn't well and unleashed some of that, um, on our family and, uh, and much to his own chagrin too. It's nothing that he would ever sign up for or ever do. Um, but again, this trauma is real. And so there's that, and there's a few other things, but, um, but at this point in my life, I'm so grateful for, and I say that not, not just like as a talking head, cause that's what I'm supposed to say, because like I'm over it. I was not over it. 
for a long time, I had to chew it up, spit it out, puke it out, vomit it over and over and over again until it became rich nourishment for me. And, um, and so my family is uh, just, just powerful, so full of heart, so full of passion. And I'm so grateful for the lessons, but where I stand today is in no way, shape or form would have ever been anything that I could have ever conceived of based on our upbringing. Both my parents were from extreme poverty. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's just, uh, extraordinary. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. spicy. Thank you. Spicy. And you, I know you have this retreat center in Mount Shasta and what do you do there? Tell me, tell me about this. Like I can actually energetically feel the land. Mm -hmm. And it feels very palpable. So tell me about that and what kind of things you create and offer there. Yeah, well, um, I do a lot of uh, helping people connect with their worth, with their lineage, with their roots authentically. So it um, over there, we just embrace that all people come from indigenous people, no matter where we're from. And it's very much my work over there to help people embody and reawaken this this intrinsic wisdom how to read the skies and and talk to the land commune with the earth and mm. so the divinity is really making itself uh known through the earth plane uh and up there we you know I, I i do i do that work but the land itself is like mother's milk it is walking into um just excessive amounts of compassion love Um, and, and so, yeah, I teach people kind of some of the foundations of how to work uh, more authentically with the spirit of the land and also, um, work a lot with, um, with, with plant medicines as well, Mm because that's a heavy part of my training, um, as well. And it's just been so mind blowing, Debbie, it's been so extraordinary, so beautiful. I'm going to start crying. It's so beyond, so beyond anything I ever had ever dreamed of Mm. when I first conceived of this idea. And it's just such an intense blessing um, for not just for me or for the community that gathers or the different people who descend upon there whenever I'm kind of doing, doing our, we're doing our thing up there, but it has given me um, a real template for what we can expect and what I can call in for humanity as well. I feel like when we're there, it is a foreshadowing of what is possible for humans when we integrate who we are hmm. and when we learn how to really move from the heart. Before we started this show, uh, you mentioned that you have seen a lot of activity in the skies, that you go to take a picture and it's like you almost can't take a picture without capturing unexpectedly a spacecraft or something or a being or whatever. Yeah. So is that something that occurs specifically in Shasta for you? Because I know there's tremendous activity up there. Yeah, actually it happens in my backyard. Really? (laughs) My regular home in the Bay area, but it happens up there. Yeah. I have some good, some pretty good photos um, of some saucer like thingies when I'm like live streaming and stuff like that. Um, But yeah, the activity, uh, it really started when I was kind of called to start working directly with the sun as the source of creator, as a source of creator and uh, understanding that the angels in spirit as uses the sun as a portal. So I would just kind of call and pray, pray for the angels to, to come and then take some snapshots. And then uh, I didn't, didn't do a lot. I haven't done it a lot, but when I do, there's, there's stuff happening in the sky and it's extraordinary. It's, it's a, to me, it's just been such a mind blowing connection between, um, you know, if you look at some of the old books, even the cave paintings about these benevolent beings that come from the skies, come from the heavens. And so I'm kind of having fun thinking about angels and these, these, uh, these little things in the sky as being one in the same, you know, we, we have Ezekiel talking about beings, the angels and chariots of fire and all of those things. So I feel like we're on an, in an extraordinary time on the planet. And, uh, 
if we do our work to detox from fear and from peer paranoia and those kinds of things and open our hearts wider to really receive love and the bounty of love, we can have some pretty extraordinary experiences right now. So you, you've seen them, you've captured them, certainly you feel them, um, but mostly we're talking about on camera, right? Or phone, whatever it is you're using. Yeah. Yeah. Have you actually had any interaction that you're clear is benevolent galactic sort of thing? You mean like like a, a, a space alien, you know, sitting here talking to me, handing me a sandwich kind of thing? Well, I don't know if they would be that interested in the sandwiches. A pastrami but... <laughs> sandwich, pastrami, turkey. But hey, right? We just said you ask and they can deliver the angels. That, uh, but yes, I, I'm asking you, have you had, um, you know, there's there's two ways. There's a lot of people who actually have interactions without a doubt. And then there's people who have a, it's a telepathic, meaning that um, they're highly aware with their eyes closed that there's a benevolent being or beings there sent to interact with them. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's what I'm curious about. So it's more telepathic for me. So I will sense where I should take a picture, take a picture, and then there's something in there. And so it's telepathic, you know, right now. Um, it hasn't always been that way. I've had experiences my whole life. I had my first um quote unquote alien encounter when I was 19 or 20, that one was, was very present. That one was physical and I could feel it in, you know, I could, that was a big one. Um, but right now it's just, you know, play, play time. I don't really have, you know, I just work with the angels. I do my work. I'm really focused on staying here in the third dimension and doing my best work. And the rest of that is like, thank you for being here and for showing me that you're here. Now let's like come and party and help me rock, help me rock and touch people's lives and, and, and do all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, there's been some close calls where I could really feel the physical presence and that, but when the physical presence is there, my body reacts in a certain way where it starts doing a, doing fear because it, you know you sense something that's extraordinary in in a physical form. So I know when it's getting too close, and I'll just say it. My 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 body is not doing well right now. So if you guys can back up, tone it down a little bit. Let's mm-hmm. talk from afar, uh, kind of thing. Um, but I still feel like the beings that are with me are angelic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I want to ask you about your physical rebirth because, I mean, I know on one hand, because I, you and I are connected through social media and I believe it's been a while that you posted about this, um, but it's also evident seeing you, you know, seeing all your snapshots, you know, you look absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? What happened? What did you come up against? What did you have to let go of? What did you have to heal? You're like, who are you? What helped you to become this physical who you are right now? Yeah, I'm still putting those pieces together. Mm. Um, So uh, yeah, well, the latest, I've had a few iterations of these experiences. The latest, I I went through a a thing when I opened up Casa Condor. Mm -hmm. And uh, before... Before my first group, it was very stretchy, initiation energy. I thought I was, I mean, I was stretched too far and I was stressed and I was just like, this is a horrible idea. And I was just getting put through the, put through the grinder, but it was through during my first ceremony where I started getting um, taken into a altered, a very altered state, so altered. I didn't need medicine. And so, so, uh. Yeah, through that process, I had, I guess the best I can describe it was an integration with my ancestors and also with Condor Spirit, which is the guiding governor over there. And um, that set me, uh, that was a, that was just a big old heart rebirth, heart and mind, a, a hyper reset. I became really like a child again, like just playful, running around all this energy. um, So in communion with spirit, with nature, with the birds that I'm talking to everybody. And uh, 
And uh, it took me a while to kind of come, come and integrate all of that back, especially it's a little awkward as a mother of two coming back and you, you, my whole identity on the inside has shifted. I was very aware of all the masculine side of me and I had a hard time even labeling myself as a female because there's just a very masculine bird <laughs> inside of me. I know this is so weird, right? But not uh, at all. It's fascinating. Yeah, I didn't know that this experience was possible. And people that I had trained with in shamanically had never expressed this experience. So I knew that people, I didn't know anybody who had this experience, I had to kind of go through it myself as which often happens to me. And then later on, I discover more. But yeah, Debbie, I couldn't even type for six weeks. I couldn't like my fingers, it was like little talons. And I'm like, you know, and my, my, uh, my assistant, she knew, um, and we would just make fun because I was still kind of, I was still myself, but not myself. And, uh, and I had to, again, pick up the pieces, reintegrate and become Karen again, but different Karen. Um, but yes, it, I couldn't type. Um, I was, I was very, I, my whole, how I dress changed. I mean, everything is different. So some people would call it like a walk-in. I don't, I didn't experience it like that. Yeah. It was an integration of unconscious aspects of myself. And uh, man, it sounds powerful. It sounds amazing. And I, I just have to celebrate you yeah. for being that surrendered to allow an experience like that to come through you. I didn't have a, that one, it, it happened. There was nothing I could do. I was broken, stretched so far. So that one, it happened. Mm. And, uh, it, wow. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was from me taking that bid for power, deciding that it was time to get that house. Cause that was a big stretch for me financially, as far as dreams go and daring to dream that's putting, that was me putting my neck out there as far as I could go. And, uh, it was just time, you know, it was time. And I think so many of us are going through our own rebirths in a, in a lot of ways. Mine was just, just extremely dramatic as, as they go for me. I think sometimes just that you, my first miracle that was like dramatic. So, you know, it's that Latina flair. It's going to be a little. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave up alcohol, right? I don't know if you're still alcohol free, but at the time I seem yeah. to recall you gave up alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Gave up alcohol. And, uh, I think that gave me the bandwidth and the vitality to even dream a bigger dream and to have the, uh, the energy to actually pursue, pursue that. Uh, but yeah, it was just time. It was time. And you lost weight and, 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 and it's like, you're talking about this very internal process, which is incredibly powerful to allow that whole gestation period and that awakening, if you will. And then that find each of these pieces finding their way somehow back together like Corinne 2.0. <laughs> I know. It was it was it was a little hair raising because I didn't couldn't identify with my business anymore. Like I didn't have the same passion for things. Like I had to sell stuff and I was like, oh I don't I don't even know how to so it took me a while. Yeah. It was it it was quite a lot to to deal with. But it was really, really on the other hand fun you know, super, super fun. My kids had fun with it. They knew like you could, it was obvious. I, mommy had gone through a change. And so, uh, <laughs> so they just kind of laughed we just giggled, you know, the whole time and hope that I could type again someday. <laughs> hope the talons would learn how to, like, how to work yeah, better. Very awkward, you know? Wow. So you naming a condor, that was like, no joke. That, that was deep. It, uh, yeah. Casa was condor. Casa Condor, Condor Spirit is legit, real thing. And uh, and yeah, I call him Grandpappy. I have a picture of him hanging on the wall and this Grandpappy Condor and he gives everybody who goes blessings. And then when I'm up there and now, you know, obviously I channel Condor Spirit and, and, uh, and, and you know, I discovered afterwards that Condor to the Peruvian folk, you know, down in, in Peru represent the, the Condor gives you a crystal heart. And it's another word for Christ heart. And so and it helps us be light and playful and all of those things. So condor spirit, you know, does, does some good healing for folks and, you know, people get giggly and playful and ridiculous. And that's just what we all need. <laughs> oh, that's awesome because I'm actually in um shamanic school, a six month program, and we are 
It's next week or the week after we are starting on Great Eagle Condor, the north direction, our final direction, although I'm sure Pachamama and the ancient ones and Father Sky, Grandmother Moon will be in there towards the end as well. However, um, I'm very excited for that direction. You know, just the feeling of the great eagle condor, knowing that, you know, here we are in 3D and it's often like this, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you're, everything's so real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and once you take a bird's eye view of something, you know, you're actually looking down and you can see the matrix of everything. First of all, the drama leaves, all the import leaves, and you're able to see so much more when you widen back. And I love this idea of the, first of all, the freedom of the bird and the wisdom of the bird. And yeah, that they fly with great spirit above the mountains, all of that. So hearing you share this, I'm very excited to get into that learning and teaching soon. Oh yeah. The animals, the animals, it, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. Mm. It's, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as if the angels then came to me in a different form so I could understand them in a different form because birds wings, you know, all, all the things, but oh, birds are true. angels. Angels are the ones that are flying even higher than those. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all one beautiful life stream of, of blessings. Yeah. So for folks out there who's saying, you know, I'm feeling stuck or, you know, there's something really painful going on and I would prefer it not be here. How do you suggest that they talk to their angels so that those angels can help them to really create a difference? Well, what they're showing me right now for your people is to lay belly down on the earth first. And to just really be present with the earth and dump the heavy energy, the hucha or uh, the dark energy, um, because it's just energy is the thing, is what they're saying now. It's just energy. So try not identifying with it. It just is. Notice it and dump. Then when you're dumping... It's an Archangel Sandalfin who comes up from the ground. And it's Archangel Sandalfin talking to everyone right now. And it's almost as if he's showing me us flying above the ground and he's bringing this cord from your, from your navel down, pulling you like hot air balloons down to the ground and, and Archangel Sandalfin is saying, if you want peace, if you want safety, if you want rest, come down, not up. And he's saying, talk to him. So for right now, the answer your, to your question is Archangel Sandalfin is uh, coming forward. Archangel Sandalfin is known as the one who receives our prayers and sends them to creator. And so whatever your prayers are, and they're also telling me to tell you to not, or to, to tell, tell everyone, don't think that because they're angels, you have to be um, righteous or perfect about it. You can ugly cry. You can cuss. You can tantrum when down on the ground, you can say, why, why, why you can rage. And they're saying these big emotions, it's very important um, and that they're big enough uh, for you to be able to, for them to be able to hold you in a way that maybe no one else has held you, or maybe we couldn't um, accept that spirit would be able to hold us in this way. So they're saying tantrum, rage, and ask spirit to help relieve you of this. And don't feel like you have to show up as anything, but exactly what you are in the moment. Hmm. Thank you so much for that. That's beautiful. Yes. What about signs? So people who are listening, they're like, well, I want to know my angels are real. So, and I want to know that they're really here to help me. How can we ask for signs from them? I won't even ask you what the signs look like, but how do we ask for signs? And then how do we identify? Oh, that's what I was asking for. Okay. So right now it's, they're coming in through the body and they're saying, First, call, call us in and then wait until you feel something in the body. 
you feel something. So maybe it's just like an energy change or you feel warmer, colder, pressure. They're saying, just call us in. You don't need to know the names. Just call us in. And then you say, show me, show me the signs, show me that you're real. And I would stand outside for, for this, um, stand outside. You can even go for a walk. They touch us in specific parts of the body. Like right now, Debbie, you have some touching the tops of your feet and also one on your left shoulder in your back. And so all of us have special places inside of our bodies where you can feel like a light pressure or like an energy or something, just a light touch. Maybe if you close your eyes, you feel a brightness on your hand, a brightness on your, wherever it could be your shoulders. Um, they just want all of us to realize how physically present they are with us, I think. And then from there, once you know how they touch you, you could be like, yo, angels come and, and then show me. And then they can take you on a walk and start showing you, but stay open, keep your eyes open and know that there's no such things as coincidence. Pay attention to all the small signs. You may not know what they mean, but you know them because it, you feel it's just like, oh, that was weird. That's peculiar. Write those things down and ask spirit later. Hey, what does this mean? And then you learn how to be in communion, in relationship. And again, I can't stress that that enough. Be in relationship as if you're wooing a new lover. Mm. How How would you address um, a new lover, a new friend, a new ally, and stay in relationship in that way. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know what you're saying is the truth, Corinne, because when you say you come as you are, you present exactly as you are, you connect authentically. I mean, you're a character, right? You have this comedic hilarious, obviously very deep and spiritual side of you, but you're also quite hilarious and unique. And one of the things that I love about your books is that your personality shines. You write how you speak. So you get Corinne in this. And so clearly, if you being Corinne and you've had some phenomenal experiences and miracles and really faith turning stuff over and things showing up. And I know you've got stories in here. You talk about people who come to you with different crises or situations and you help them. And then they have these amazing things occur in their life. Mm -hmm. So come as you are, look for the signs, feel it in your body. Thank you for that about my left shoulder and my, the top of my feet. And um, I love knowing they're there. Yes. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really sweet. <laughs> so this is Dare to Dream. Not that you haven't created a lot so far <laughs> in your life. However, for all of us, right? It's the next and the next. What are you next, Dare to Dream, Corinne? What's your future dreams and goals? Okay, my my biggest dream for myself is to experience love in more extraordinary ways. I think that's my, my big goal, experience, love, spaciousness, um, peace. And, uh, but my, always my biggest dreams is that other people's hearts are, are met, are found and met with, with love, with that, with spirit. Do you still smoke mapacho? Of course I have like about 200 of them just staring right at me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, of course. Yes. You go girl. So I love, so are you actually facilitating these ceremonies on your own or do you have people who come in and work at your uh, work at Casa Condor? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trained as, you know, cause I'm a psychotherapist as well. So I'm trained as a psychotherapist and I've done a lot of shamanic work over the last 13 years. So I kind of weave both in and I also bring, bring people and have, uh, um, have, um, have other allies come and co-facilitate with me as well. Yeah. And I, I also now I'm recalling from several years ago, didn't you, you got accepted into the MAPS program. Is yeah. that correct? CIIS. So yeah, tra tra trained with MAPS as well. And oh. CIIS. So I've done, yeah, I've done, I, I do. Yeah, I do both. Yeah. How was it? How was that experience? 
I mean, it was great. It was kind of a weird time because it was right after COVID, at least for that specific training. Um, but I mean, like these medicines are just so uh, wonderful. So I loved um, uh, understanding them from a more clinical lens rather than just a shamanic or experiential lens. Cause I know that they've helped me, um, transform so much as well, detox from years of trauma. So it was, it's always wonderful. Um, so I, I, I thought it was really amazing, but now it's putting, putting all of that, putting my breadth and depth of experience and, and now just weaving in the shamanic work and then the, the earth medicine work and the the ancestral work. I mean, now it's just like this playground of just potent, powerful awesomeness, but it has everything to do with the people who, who gather, you know, the geniuses who gather together, who want to ex be heart explorers, you know? Mm. Oh, that's so nicely said. The geniuses who gather, who want to be, who are heart explorers and new caverns, new, ex new caverns of the heart, you know, like in the sixties, it was the, the psychonauts. And for me, it's so, it's not psychonauts anymore. It's, it's aeronauts, Aeros, eros, it's like heart, heart, you know, we're exploring new caverns of the heart and it is vast territory. Hmm. And what do you want to tell us here at the end? How can we get a hold of you? I know Corinne, and I'll spell it for everybody. Corinne is C O R I N, her last name G R I L L O. So CorinneGrillo.com. How can people get your book? How can they find out more about you? Yeah. Well, they can get the book on my website um, or Amazon local bookstore. If you have, if you have some around, always support our local bookstores. And if you have any questions about anything that I discussed today, you can email me at uh, support at corengrillo.com. And um, tell me where you're headed. Are you full, like complete with your book tour? Are you in the middle of your book tour? Where are you at with this? And when does it, um, sort of wean off. Yeah, I think I'm I'm kind of in the in the weaning stage. I'm already kind of dreaming about um new new books, but I I think I actually might go on the road, go to different cities uh, and just kind of do some do some book signings and stuff like that. I'm heading into summer. My daughter's just graduating from high school. So, I I'm going to take a little break and then see where spirit inspires me to move next. Amazing. Well, thank you yet again for coming on the show. Thank you for your brilliance. And I have just enjoyed so much this time with you. Oh, thanks, Debbie. Thanks so much for having me on. It's so good to hang out with you here. Always, always. And I end today's show with this quote, I am the manifester of unlimited abundance and divine providence incarnate in this life. I am grateful for the abundant life I have. Awaken in me my spirit of manifesting. I desire to shape my world with abundance. I see the beauty of today and the promise of tomorrow. My mind is filled with abundant thoughts. I am inspired to bring, to bring prosperity and abundance bounty and overflowing love into the world. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave comments, please. And thanks you guys for doing that. I love reading everything that you write. You know, I get back to you. Next week on the show, I'm super excited. Finally, he's going to be here. The amazing Asil Toksal of Ascension One. As Seal receives and transmits transformational energy and spoken wisdom from higher and non dual sources of consciousness, he is going to be channeling during the show. And I just spoke to his team today. And I believe that next week he is channeling the Elohim. So super excited to meet him. He's doing incredible work out into the world. Thanks, you guys, for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to create all your dreams into your reality. And if you need some help along the way, get some angel wealth magic and some tips to call in the best forces possible. Bye, everyone.